Hi, everyone. I want to spend these next few minutes sharing a boat, bath, and or shower time to do with my physical disability. Where I'm coming from is that one of my artificial hips has more likely than not gone into hardware failure, and I've been needing to relearn how to live my life now that I know the pattern of the artificial hip, I'm able to figure out the logistics of life and hopefully make everything work, or at least I'm not triggering what's wrong with the hip near as often now. So I want to begin by just going through some basics. The first is that there's a series of long handle tools for putting on shoes, socks, pants, and even getting a shirt that's on a coat hanger, bring it to you, and then you you know pulling it over your hands. Now all of these do require a certain amount of dexterity that is the ability to move your fingers as well as your arms. What I have thought about in terms of personal hygiene is for the person with the physical disability to do as much as is practical for themselves and then to get help with the other parts when washing and dressing themselves. Now, just one, one, one slight caveat. When I say as much as possible for themselves, what I'm saying to you is, you know, if I've got an, a medical appointment later in the day and, you know, I'm over here at the morning and it's shower time, I might be more worried about this and realize for this particular day, ask for help here so I've got the energy for the activity that's represented by this finger. So I don't want any of you to feel blindsided by me talking in sort of the terms of reference that I'm used to. I do understand that there is a component to managing your energy and spending your energy in the same way that you spend money and budget money. So what I've realized is that there was something more that I could do to help myself. It's been a struggle staying ahead of the skin breakdown in the folds of skin in my body. Okay, the armpits, the fold of skin in my bum, and between my scrotum and inner thigh. Obviously, slight anatomy changes for a woman. But what I've realized is a hair dryer can be used for more than hair, and with the fan on high and a little bit of heat, you can easily dry your legs or where it's hard for you to reach and help you dry yourself. There are a few caveats. So first, the skin of your body doesn't respond the same as the hair on your head to a hair dryer. It takes seconds to dry compared to the amount of water that's absorbed into our body hair. So literally blowing it up and down two or three times almost like you're painting a wall would be the type of stroke that you would use with the hair dryer. The second is that you need to have sensation to get used to this. So what I mean is you need to know and be able to feel if you're beginning to cause yourself an injury or harm. 
I do think that this could be learned and you could visually tell if you're dry, if you've lost sensation, maybe from diabetes, for example. The other part of this is the control of the hair dryer. You know, this is a heated element. You could cause a fire risk. So if you don't have good use of your hands, you know, you might want to use this when a personal support worker is with you or a family member is with you or a trusted friend is there with you. You could still move the hair dryer for as much as you are capable of doing, but you want to make sure that you're safe and not going to cause a host fire from, from this. So I'm finding that this really helps. And you, you might be familiar with infants having a rash on their bum and trying to sort of stay one step ahead of it. You know, this is helping me because of the amount of time that I need to spend sitting. And, you know, the same with, with my legs. What the hair dryer is able to do for me is being able to reach where I limit or I'm reaching the limit of what I'm able to do before bending in a painful way becomes an issue. So the lesson on this is to be creative, you know, think outside the box, troubleshoot with friends, talk things over. When you're talking things over, though, being receptive to what's being said back to you and hearing someone trying to help you, even if what they suggest isn't practical, at least acknowledging that someone has made a suggestion in goodwill towards you. And I want to close with this. I understand how vulnerable a person can get to feel when you're opening yourself up and you're expressing what your needs are. And it can make you feel very vulnerable and almost like a turtle wanting to go back into its shell. And I've had these moments before. I'm more comfortable with them now, but what you need to sort of tell yourself or what I tell myself is I'm asking for help and the suggestions, you know, they may be useless or they may be, you know, they may be, you know, just completely miss the point. But if you can merit that someone is trying their best to help you, it's a way of building a relationship and bonding, even if their suggestions aren't, aren't applicable, a person feeling heard could go a long way in, you know, in getting to know somebody and then really being able to open up to that person, you know, over the span of several months as they get to know you more and more and the relationship naturally develops. I hope even a little bit of what I've said is something you could apply to your life today. Thank you for watching this video. And I know when I was first dealing with this topic, it made me feel very vulnerable. So I especially want to say thank you for the time that you've spent hearing me out on this particular topic. I do wish you all the best in tackling this and finding strategies that's going to be done with dignity and respect towards you as a person. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.